All right, good people, before I get to the niceties and goodities that lie within this box, I wanted to explain really quickly why in God's name would you spend $1,100 on an ESC? Well, the answer, people, is simple. Smoke. Fire. And I think, judging by the comments left in some of the videos, especially the data videos, people who just jumped into this project and watched one of those things and kind of didn't really get what was going on there, how it takes, you know, this is a dangerous process and we have to build up to it. And a lot of people are like, wow, just looking at graphs, that's not fun. Well, you know what? We have to do that in order to get to the end game. And what is the end game, you people ask? You fine people. Let's make some noise. Let's send it. Before we can do that, let's open up the magic box. So this is from Advanced Power Drives. Actually, I bought the unit from Steve New's company. New uh, is a brushless motor god, if you don't know. I mean, you might not because you haven't had to do the research that I had to do to get to this point. Uh, but he owns a company called Neutronics, and he is actually a US distributor for these fine Australian pieces of hopefully art. We're about to find out. Let's dig in. So basically, this ESC is not rated at anything super spectacular. It's 400 amps continuous, 16S, but it does have very specific conditions under what they consider continuous. So for these guys, 400 amps continuous is 180 seconds continuously. All right, so there's my invoice. And uh, well, I'm glad I did this, but man, I hate packing peanuts. I just happen to have a trash bag next to me. So here we go. This is like burrowing through the Ark of the Covenant. An $1,100 ESC lurks in here somewhere. Engineered by Australians, the descendants of Penal people. Clouds part. Cherub sing. Here's the box. That's awfully small, you say. Let me get this junk out of the way. So this is an awfully small box. Well, they're small ESCs. In fact, they brag about having the highest power density of any ESC on the planet. Uh, well, QC passed. Genuine, not a ripoff. Oh, hologrammatical QC past ceiling stickers. The seal has been broken. This is when you open the case and your face melts off. All right. All right, so they're thanking me and there's a code there to scan. <laughs> this is it. Look at how small this little baby is. Look at how small. Okay, that is a huge, huge advantage for us. This, I mean, it's got some weight to it. This thing has some mass, but this is a very small ESC. It's much, much smaller than the flyer ESCs. And I wanted to say this about the flyer ESCs. It's not that they're bad. They're not bad. They're optimistic in their ratings. I'm going to put it that way. And they're very simplistic. They don't do anywhere close to what this thing does. This thing will data log all kinds of stuff. It will actually tell us the electrical RPM of our motor, which you basically then divide by the number of poles. In our case, it'd be six poles on the motor to get to actual RPM. So we're going to know exactly where we are on the compressor map. See, all those videos that we did that some unfortunate people had uh, the misfortune to actually, you know, jump into this project in one of those videos, all that data and all that background that we did is going to come to its own here, basically, because we're going to know exactly where we are on the, the compressor map, for example. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that we're going to get out of this. So let me talk a bit about the construction of this guy. So one of the ways they achieve their massive power density is they have multiple PC boards. In fact, let me see if I can get this thing to focus. Maybe. Yes. No. 
don't know, too old, need reading glasses, can't see, but I'm gonna assume that's in focus. So anyway, so these are our three phases. This is, these are our MOSFET boards, one for each phase. And they stack them in this really cool manner to achieve this maximum power density this way. And then the control circuitry would be the bottom board. And this will be the, the power coming in. And that's it, basically. You just solder some heavy bastard wires to, to these, uh, to these pads and there you go. That's that's the way they make it. Uh, Steve New told me these are eight layer circuit boards, which is one of the reasons why this has so much heft. The boards themselves have a lot of copper in them. Very nicely made, definitely works of art. 16S, 400 amps. And again, 400 amps is 180 seconds continuous. It has a 600 amp peak rating in this little tiny box. So the next thing to do is let's go ahead and, uh, you know, there's not much more we can do with this thing, really. Uh, there's some really cool things, by the way. You could control this with a CAN bus, for example. Uh, it's not just designed for RC use. Uh, look, designed and manufactured in Australia with that kangaroo, Mr. Hoppity. Uh, but let's go ahead and plug this, this thing into uh, USB and uh, see what our options are for programming this bad boy. Meet you at the other desk. All right, so what you do is you click on the configuration tool. This is an EXE file that you can download from their website. It's a little hard to find. Um, maybe I'll put a link in the description below, but we fire this up, move this into the screen, and it's already there, so it shows up as COM9 in my case. What you want to do is, if at first you plug this thing in, and this holds true for most things like this, if you don't see it right away, it's very likely because of the USB cable itself. And the same thing happened here. I used some weird flat USB cable that I happened to have handy. It didn't see it right away, so I switched to a different USB cable, so there it is. So let's go ahead and connect, and there it is. So it says, you know, ESC is connected. It tells you what it is. There's a checksum, which is great. What a checksum is, is it's a way of verifying transferred data. Uh, we use it in my work to uh, verify video files, basically. Uh, but here I assume they're using it for communicational purposes. So anyway, so there you go. So let's start looking through. The flash memory is 0.67% full. That's where you would data log to. All right, let's look at ESC modes. So there's a bunch of uh, options here. There's normal, multi-rotor, heli, traction, and reverse. Uh, they tell you what they are. Most of them are one millisecond pulse is 0% throttle and two millisecond pulse width is 100% throttle. Uh, there's I did a video about controlling the controller and actually I'm about to shoot another video about uh, uh, one of my subscribers uh, did me a really awesome favor uh, and uh, we created a different drive mechanism actually. It was his suggestion and he followed through on it and I'm going to share that with you guys in a little bit. Uh, but let's focus on this $1,100 little box of joy. Anyway, so we have normal multi-rotor heli traction in reverse, like I said. Uh, so here I'm probably going to keep it to normal. You would think that I would want heli. I would think that I would want heli. Uh, but uh, the guys over at APD, they've actually been emailing me and giving me some guidance. And what they want to do is they want me to send a data log to them so they can tell me how to optimize this thing for what we're doing, which is really super cool. And, of course, you know, we'll share that with uh, you all when we get that information as well. So... Basically, right now, to leave it in normal is the advice I got. Uh, motor type, large, under 1,000 under kV. Direction is normal. Motor start power is medium. I would actually want the motor start power to be low because I don't want to hammer that drive any more than I have to. Timing advance, 15 degrees. Uh, PWM drive frequency, anywhere from 12 to 60 kilohertz. The flyer ESCs just give you, I think, 8, 16, and 32. This you can set it wherever. Right now, I'm just gonna keep it at 30. Uh, as little changes as possible until we get to know this thing, basically, is the idea. Throttle settings. So, ramp up response and ramp down response. I'm just gonna leave these at default. Because again, what uh, <laughs> Making Stuff Awesome Mike over there did, is uh, he created a sketch where we can actually adjust that in a microcontroller, Arduino specifically. Uh, so this is not even an issue now, and inrush current shouldn't be an issue. So limits, let's look at limits. Here we have 
current limits. Uh, if you'll notice, the current limit is set to 300, even though this is a 400 amp ESC. I did communicate with the guys over at uh, APD, and they told me that uh, they suggest leaving the voltage, which is up here, obviously, and the current limits to their default state because the ESC will limit these automatically. Uh, and this is the only ESC in the range that goes above 300 amps. So they basically told me, you know, don't worry about it. It will go out to max. But they did warn me that if uh, we let these things sit on the current limit for extended period of time, we'll have unnecessary losses due to heat, which makes sense because they'll get hot, and obviously that will cause resistance in the circuitry, and you'll get losses that way, basically, and it becomes a, a vicious cycle, and you can have a situation where it runs away, eventually explodes, and bursts into flames, as we've already seen. So that would explain the current limits. Basically, they give us another 100 amps on top of this. The proof will be when we do some data logs, and we'll actually see. This should be hitting over 300 amps. We know that uh, with the other setup and the other ESC, we saw peaks of 340 amps. So we should be seeing at least similar current levels. Anyway, right now I had gone back and I changed this to gradual shutdown. I'm going to uh, go ahead and put this back to hard shutdown because this is for temperature limit. And if it hits 100 degrees Celsius, I just want it to shut off. I don't want to roast this thing. And it's great that it has that internal protection. So when you make a change, you obviously have to click save to ESC. There it is, and it saves it. So uh, let's see. Um, here under the capacity limit, we're just going to leave that as none. Under voltage limit, gradual shutdown. That's, you know, I'll leave that there uh, just because I... You know, it makes me feel good, I guess. We'll see. If we have to change it, we have to change it. I don't really know enough about this ESC yet to uh, comment on that specifically. Let's look at the logging page now. So here uh, it's enabled. Uh, you can erase the log data here. There's an interval time, how often it takes sort of a snapshot of all the data that it collects, and it collects ESC voltage, current, temperature, electrical RPM, uh, the input throttle percentage, and the motor duty cycle. Uh, so, you know, if you do every 25 milliseconds, you get an hour of log data to the internal memory. If you do it every five seconds, it's 400 hours. We're just going to leave that at 25 milliseconds. That's more than enough. Endpoints, this is something else we don't really need to worry about. This is basically my understanding of this anyway, is this is the uh, input pulse width. Eh, we should be good to go, so I'm not going to sweat it. Um, let's see what's under, under this other tab. Now, this is a whole bunch of stuff I largely do not understand. Uh, there's synch synchronous rectification. That has something to do with if the motor uh, commutates properly with the ESC. Uh, don't really know exactly what it is. Uh, obviously, it's a synchronization setting of some sort. Uh, active phase current DMAG, don't know what that is. Output signal, enable isolated RPM output. I'm going to talk to those guys and see if there's a way that maybe we can track it in real time, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, if you've ever driven uh, even a 500 horsepower car, but we should be closer to 700, you ain't exactly looking at gauges a whole lot. You're looking for lights uh, because that's about all you have time to process. So really, it's more vital that we can actually data log it and analyze the data after the fact than at the moment. At the moment, we just basically want safety features. You know, just shut down if you're about to burst into flames. Lift if you're about to hit the wall. You know, that kind of stuff. We're not looking for gradual fixes, so to speak. Uh, so there you have it. Oh, the motor beep thing, by the way, this is kind of trick, and I mentioned this before. Uh, the way these ESCs communicate with you when there's not a PC in the loop or some sort of display unit in the loop is they actually play the motor coils like speakers, and they'll send audio frequencies to the motor coils, and you can actually hear them. They're, they're audible. This one, this ESC actually allows you to shut that off, which is kind of slick. You know, and that's, that's cool if we don't want to hear it. I mean, when you're driving the car, you can't really hear it anyway. Because the, you know, the thing is where it is. It's not in the cabin or anything. So you don't really hear it. So you don't really need that enabled. But I don't think it really makes much difference. So anyway, so there you go. There is the whole uh, ESC configuration and how we set everything up. Uh, I wanted to share this data with you guys because I thought you'd find it useful and helpful. And uh, I think it's really, really cool. And the guys at APD have been responsive. You know, I'm going to wait to see what the flyer guys come back with as far as the, the flaming ESC. Uh, that shit is technically under warranty and we did not hit its limits. So hopefully they're, you know, they, they do right right by us and then we have the smaller motor and uh, another ESC that we know we can't quite push as hard but we can still get some power out of it so maybe we'll, we'll
we'll find a use for that. Who knows? Second blower? I, I don't know yet. Um, we'll see. I have some ideas uh, on how to utilize that in an efficient way. But, you know, let's get this sorted first. You know, let's, let's make a nine second pass first. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe because we are going to make some noise. Yeah.